All right, guys, going to show you a couple clips, then we'll talk about some things. All right, guys, on the, the crank dampener that came with this kit, I did have to pull it back off. Everything fit and it's flush and everything, but the back on the snout didn't quite reach the oil pump gear. It was supposed to butt up against it, so I had to pull it back off, do a lot of measuring, and wind it up uh, taking my old crank dampener and cutting the end of it off and making me a spacer. I'll put some pictures of it in here, but that spacer measured 0 0.322, 0 0.322 in inches on, with a caliper. That's how thick it was. I couldn't get another crank dampener nowhere. That Pacific one that's made for this kit, the BHJ uh, people, however you pronounce it. But I checked with them. They didn't have nothing on the shelf. I was just going to get the 6 one dampener and go from there but i just used this one for now just made a spacer it should be fine we'll see but just wanted to touch on that real quick Alright, the spacer for the driver's side on the bracket is about one point one seventy four measured with a caliber. And the one for the passenger side on one seventy eight. That's what I had to do. Just make two brackets. I mean, two spacers. One to go in here, one to go in here. Because we're at bracket. It's just a little bit different. And this idler right here, where this is a VVT 5, 7, 0, 9, and 10 bracket, there is a bolt hole try to get to show you guys you see it right there well it is off center from where this idler is and it does not line up so instead of four mounting points you got three but I used the, the bolt that came with the kit and put it in that idler that's what it's supposed to go in anyway but it's supposed to go through this bracket you could probably make some shims and make that work but there's also a aluminum on the back of this that's made as a spacer to rest against this idler i had to cut that off flat to get this bracket to fit on this engine so and also for that lower idler on the bracket Took really, some, had some really uh, thin shims that I made, and that is what they measure to space that lower idler out just a tiny bit. The lower one right here on this bracket. The upper one's fine. You can see it sits on a stub anyway, but it needed to come out just a tiny bit because it was right on the edge of this. So now it matches, almost matches the, the top idler. I just wanted to show you that. What you had to do with this bracket on this on this car, because uh, just a little bit of modifications that you got to do to make this work.
belts. This is what I'm running right now. This is the belt for the blower, the supercharger that I'm running. This one right here will also work, but it's just a little bit longer. I've got the 3.25 pulley on it. And this is what I had to run for the serpentine belt. I had to go about an inch shorter on the serpentine belt because the tensioner was maxed out with the factory belt where it's got a different size uh, crank dampener. So the serpentine side is just a higher smaller and the blower side on the dampener, the ring that bolts on it is seven and seven and a half inches. So as you can see, kindly see anyway, where the spacing and stuff is. zoom in if it is zoom try and give you guys an idea I also got a three inch pulley if I need it. I got the 3.25 on it now, but we're going to see if it can get at least 570 wheel. I, I'll just leave the 325 on it for now, but if it hits like low 550s or less, we'll probably swap the pulleys and see. Later on, I plan to go to maybe a 2.8 or a 2.6 upper pulley, but there will be a grip tech pulley. I'm just going to have to play it by ear and see how it does and what it runs like and how much boost it makes and all that. But I don't want to push it past 15 PSI because usually, if it even hit 15 PSI, we'll just have to see. But on these 2300s and every blower out there has got a got a limit you start pushing them past their efficiency range you ain't doing nothing just making a big heat pump and just eating your blower up that's all you're doing i mean you might get one good pass out of it at the track and after that it heats up so i want to stay kind of in the efficiency range not want to put over push it but we'll just see how it all goes all right now let's talk about how I actually made this kit fit. This is a 2008 Dodge Charger RT 5.7 Pre-Eagle Non-VVT 5.7. We'll go over the mods real quick. It has Monar drop-in rods with Wiseco pistons, a plus 21cc dome on the pistons. Has a modern muscle custom grind cam, has a FTI 3200 style converter. I ported the heads, they are pre eagle heads. Long tube headers, no catch, Borla XR1 mufflers, 12 inch case. And I done a two and a half inch mandrel bent exhaust pipe. Uh, the supercharger. Of course, the Edelbrock Superchargers, catch cans and other stuff. That's just the main stuff. I'm sure I'm missing some things, but some of you guys are saying probably, why, why didn't you go with the uh, 6-1 heads or, or Eagle heads to so you didn't have to port your ports on your pre-Eagle to match it up? Well, the pistons that I have in this with a stock 27 thousandths gasket, the compression ratio is 11 to 1. The pre-eagle heads are 85 cc's, the chamber. So they're matched up with that with 11 to 1 with the 27 thickness gasket. So if I would put eagle heads on this with those pistons in it, basing off a of stock gasket now, the compression would be crazy. 
it would be over 15. It would be crazy, and you'd have to run like a hundred thousand gasket, and it still wouldn't even get it down enough. It's close to the same thing on the six one heads. It would still be like twelve or thirteen compression ratio. So what I did, I done those pistons, and I bought Cosmetic fifty two thousandths gaskets, and that dropped it to about ten point four compression ratio right now. What it says. Now I done the. I measured for my push rods and stuff, remeasured for them, got custom push rods and in some other videos and so forth. Running comp cam valve springs, non MDS lifters, all that good stuff. But this kit, this is an Edelbrock supercharger, 2300. I got it from TPS Motorsports. Brand new. And the reason I got it, this supercharger is for a 09 and 10 5.7 VVT engine, specifically. But I went ahead and took a gamble on it and bought it because it's such a good deal. This this blower, normal price, this is a competition kit, 1533 is the number. Usually goes for over $6,500. I got this whole supercharger kit for $4,500, $4,500. So, and there is one guy that I've been talking to, he done the same thing and made his work. So I took a gamble and made it work. So what I had to do, I had to port my pre-eagle heads out to 6.1 ports and use the Cobmatic 62 thousandths intake manifold gaskets on this engine then i made some spacers for the bracket which you'll see in the video and i had to take the stock damper that this kit come with and make a, a back spacer for it it's a dual belt you got the blower belt and you got your drive belt separate which y'all guys have probably already seen in the video if you've seen it But I just wanted to touch on that and go over that and, and, and let you know. I was supposed to go get it tuned this uh, this week, but my tuner's dyno. One of the sensors went bad, so it will be this coming week. And I'm going to try to post a video of that and hopefully get it to the track next week too and try to see somewhat what we can do if... But I'll let you know, good or bad, on a dyno or how stuff goes, either way. But just wanted to go over this video and let you know how I made this fit and made it work. I just couldn't pass up that deal for a brand new uh, TVS blower. I mean, $4,500 brand new. Well, just a little bit of work to make it make it fit. There's no spacers on the intake, nothing. The only thing I had to do intake-wise was pour out my uh, pre-eagle heads to six one ports, which I'll put some pictures in this video so you can see. We are on the 3.25 upper pulley right now. We're gonna see what it can do. I'm still on the stock transmission. So I just, I'm just looking to put to make anywhere to put a number on it, 570 to around 600 right now on 93. Some I want to be somewhere in that ballpark because I don't want to push it too much with the stock transmission. I do plan on getting a built transmission later on, and then we'll crank it up a little bit more. And maybe throw some race gas in it or, or switch it over to 85 or something. But. I have heard of people out there that's pushed a stock Mag 1 transmission to 600 wheel. So we're going to test that theory out. But if it, if it blows, it blows. I plan on getting a built transmission anyway. 
I was looking at the one that Hellraiser Performance offers. Might get one through them. I thought about the, doing the foul body deal, but the time you buy, I would want to get a little bit lower mile transmission to even do the valve body deal if I done it. But by the time you buy a used uh, transmission, six, seven hundred dollars, depending on where you can find one, then get the valve body, which is about six, seven hundred dollars. I mean, a few more hundred dollars, you can buy a built transmission. The cheapest built transmission that Hellraiser has is two thousand dollars, and it's rated for six hundred and fifty wheel plus. So you better off just doing that. I just wanted to touch on these subjects, go over a few things. Show you guys around the engine bay a little bit more. That's all for this video. Like and subscribe. That's all for this video. Like and subscribe.